Welcome back to Black News Tonight. 3,000 strong African Hebrew Israelites have been calling the state of Israel home since 1969. But there remains an ongoing push to deport them in gradual steps. A recent report by the Times of Israel reveals that last Thursday, the Interior Ministry's Population and Immigration Authority has sent 51 members of the Hebrew Israelites letters ordering them to leave by September 23rd. And these letters were dated August 9th, shortening the deportation time frame by a whole month. Hebrew Israelites live predominantly in the southern city of Demona. The mayor of the town, Benny Beton, is against the deportation tactics and recently released a statement. In it, he says, in a conversation I had with the interior minister, we arranged for an urgent hearing in her office in order to cancel the deportation of members of the Hebrew community. In addition, Minister Shaked promised to freeze the deportation proceedings until the hearing. Residents of Dimona, members of the Hebrew community, I want to tell you one thing. As long as I'm here, I will not lend a hand in this horrible expulsion. Joining me now from Demona, Israel, is Sar Amadiel ben Yahuda. He is the Minister of Information for the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. Shalom, my brother. Welcome to the show. Uh, the Interior Ministry's Population and Immigration Authority sends y'all these letters. And it's not the first time that this is happening. Uh, the Demona mayor is standing by your community. Uh, if you have the mayor supporting you, you, you all have been there for over 50 years. Uh, so many people have supported you. How is this happening? Why is this happening now? Uh, Shalom, uh, Mark. Good to, good to speak with you again, and thanks for having us. Uh, indeed, that is the question, and particularly the timing is very, very uh, in, in, inappropriate. We're, we're on the eve, the literal eve, of the highest of the high holy days here, Yom Kippur, a day that's set aside for atonement and reconciliation among brethren and this is how the ministry of interior uh this is the message that they send us um that's troubling for us that's that's uh uh certainly uh the height of inappropriateness uh where is where is the uh the sensitivity but as you said this isn't something new uh we've been here before throughout our history here and there's no question that some of these, uh, not, not uh, some, but all of that 51, that they did fall between the cracks of, of legality where the immigration laws were concerned. But I would remind your viewers and remind, obviously, those who sit in the Ministry of Interior offices that Israel was founded upon the idea of an illegal immigration. It is, it is how the state of Israel came into being, part and parcel of it. Those who, who were engaged in those activities uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago, rather, uh, that uh, they are enshrined forever as heroes and heroines in the history of Israel. And so we, we find it quite um, inappropriate, uh, quite in disingenuous to serve these notices on the eve of, uh, of this, this holy day. You weren't surprised by the ruling, which is interesting. I mean, when you came on the show uh, a couple of months ago, some people had gotten notices. There was some hope uh, that there'd be a, a stay, that there'd be some kind of pushback, that the state would change its mind. Uh, but since then, there hasn't been. Why are you not surprised that there hasn't been a change in sentiment or a change in policy from the state toward uh, the, Afro, the Afro, African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem? Well, we're not surprised simply because this was a this was a uh, uh, an appeal to the same ministry and the same departments and the same functionaries who sit in the offices of the Ministry of Interior that were asked to make the appeal and to ask them to rule against themselves was not quite you know it wasn't something we had a lot of hope in. Uh, these are religious party functionaries. These are right wing elements. And I have to be I have to be frank and say that these are racist elements that actually still hold many of these positions in that particular ministry, and that's not that's not just us talking. Uh, there is a report that was prepared for a government ministry, was the uh, Ministry of Diaspora Affairs, and a rabbi, in one of his comments, he says. He says there are clear racial elements in the Ministry of Interior, and some of its employees seem to harbor a hostile approach. Said these people should be removed from their posts. 
So we're not surprised. <clears throat> this is going to require a legal and or political resolution. And so we're still hopeful and we see indications that such is in the works. Again, the mayor is a great supporter. He does have certain clout and, and inroads uh, that may appeal to uh, the voices of reason. There was a new government finally after nearly two years of of uh, of being in limbo here. There were no budgets. There was there was there was. Uh, so it's a what I'm saying is that it's a very very fragile coalition that that they were able to cobble together, and no one wants to upset a lot of these different uh, uh, support and elements within that coalition. So. We'll see what happens, but we do see indications that they're looking for a way that they can come up with a resolution that doesn't compromise their, their fragility. So, I mean, this is very confusing to me. It's always been very confusing to me. You know, I, I've spent a great deal of time there. Uh, I've spent time with you in the community. I've, I've seen what goes on there. Um, I have never fully understood why at this juncture, at this juncture, why they'd be, there'd be such a push to get you out. Race seems to be an issue that you're raising. I mean, many of the members are, were born and raised in Israel. They've never lived anywhere else. Many have served in the, I, the, uh, the IDF. They, they, they served in the Israeli military. Uh, they've done the things that Israeli citizens do. Uh, is what uh, what's their reason? I mean, what what can they what reason can they give other than we just don't think you belong? Uh, I I don't know of anything that makes uh, any sense, Mark. Uh, it 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 does tie back. It does have its roots in a great fear. We would say it's an irrational fear, but it's a fear of the 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 people of African ancestry all over the world that do have links to this land. And it's a fear of their awakening and wanting to identify and, and specifically wanting to then immigrate here. Uh, but in, let's deal with just one group. And we're not talking about the Africans in America, though. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a major group in itself. Let's talk about the Igbo of Nigeria. Let, let, let me let me uh, let's talk about the let, let me oh, yeah. let me pause you for one minute, uh, Amadio, because I want I want you to get to the Igbo because that's actually an interesting point. But I I, I want to play devil's advocate just a little bit here. The state of Israel will say we're not racist. Yeah. We had Operation Moses. We've had Operation Jacob. We've had we have literally airlifted Ethiopians during war and famine from the continent of Africa from Ethiopia and brought them into the state of Israel and made them citizens. So if we brought them in, clearly we're not racist, maybe it's y'all. What do you say to that? Uh, we, first of all, we have knowledge that there are more than 240,000, 240,000 more than were airlifted of Ethiopian Jews remaining in Ethiopia that the country has not moved to bring here, that are waiting, that want to come and immigrate to Israel, that have family members here. We would say, what happened, what happened to the continuation of that particular effort? Uh, it, 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 it smacks of, of possibly that this was just a stopgap measure to say, to say exactly that, that we're not racist because we've done X, Y, and Z. And we would say that, uh, you know, that's uh, that's disingenuous on their part. What can you say to people who say, wh why do you want to be there? You're black people. Your origins are in Chicago, at least in, in modern history, Chicago. Right. Ben, ben, I mean, Ben Israel, you know, left Chicago, went to Liberia, then goes to Israel. Y'all are from Chicago. Why not just go somewhere else? Why do y'all want to be in Israel so bad? What do you say to them? Well, you're right. I'm from D.C. Uh, uh, and, and, and by the way, Mark, from Philly, conceived in Philly, um, we would simply say that Me we too. know that 60 <laughs> percent. <laughs> right. I, I knew that uh, we would say that 60 percent. It is known that 60 percent of the Africans in America came through the par port of Charleston and that upwards of 60 percent of them were probably of Igbo origin, West African uh, ex uh, ethnic origins. Well, the Igbo their historical narratives, their, their, their saga, their migration sagas point them to Israel. And so uh, our, our legitimate uh, search for identity led us back to 
Israel, not just to West Africa. The, the threads of our cultural continuity did not stop or begin in West Africa. They continued back to this land. Israel is Northeast Africa. So this is the land of our ancestry. This is our, we're Judeans. We're not Jewish in the sense of being adherents to Judaism and the tenets of that religion. We are Judeans, so we actually live in Southern Judea. This is where I've made my home for the last 40 plus years, where we as a community have lived for 50 plus years. So there is an authentic, uh, proven by some DNA testing that, that, that authenticates our presence here and our ties here. And if indeed this is our ancestral land, then the Ministry of Interior need to wake up to some things and understand that there are some spiritual and, 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 and metaphysical consequences that would be the result of them trying to deport us at this particular time. How does this end? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question, uh, Mark. We're, we're hopeful, and our hope, our hope again does not lie in the political or the legal. Uh, we, we have faith and hope. We are spiritual people. We believe in the organic link of the man and the land. Uh, we, we would simply say, as ben has said before, we understand the gatekeepers having their responsibility, but again, that authority only goes but so far. Uh, here on the eve of Yom Kippur, we would expect another uh, decision. We would expect another intervention, so to speak. And again, in ben words, no power on earth will or can stop us from manifesting our destiny in this land. Well, my brother, we will be following this very closely. Uh, we'll keep our audience updated. And of course, I want to thank you for staying up very, very early in the morning uh, to make this happen. Uh, it is th past three in the morning uh, in Israel right now. Uh, so thank you for staying up and thank you for sharing your story.